Very good morning. Sabah al khair in Arabic. It is really a pleasure uh, to be in front of you, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, today uh, uh, to share our experience uh, in ABM and also to exchange the knowledge with all of the users. So uh, I'm, I'm, I have a very good experience in ABM since 2007. Uh, with different companies. So we work in Sabic and Sadara and now also in Tasni'i. And different, uh, during all of this period, you know, we have a lot of challenges and a lot of, uh, get, uh, a lot of experience more and more. Uh, today I'm gonna to uh, take you through our uh, challenges and experience in Tasni'i itself. Uh, I joined Tasnir in 2014, and the most challenge at that time, the ABM, it was there, but it's not used at all. Nobody know about it. It was there, and nobody opened it. And we've been uh, hired in Tasnir to reinforce and make it the ABM really uh, useful, and uh, emphasize and spend more money to improve the asset integrity and make it really uh, uh, usable uh, softwares and also uh, see the value out of that uh, software. Uh, I will take you through the Tasni itself. Maybe it's not known companies. So we are uh, the first company in the private sector. It was established at 1985 and in, in petrochemicals, uh, and our vision to be a leader in industries, in petrochemicals and also in, in the other uh, manufacturing. Uh, and also our, our vision to be a leader in industries and to be and keen the responsibility toward stakeholder and uh, society at large. Uh, we have also our, our mission. So we need to achieving the profitable and sustainable. And I want to be really uh, sustainable is very important. We will talk about it later, how to keep our, your asset sustained, not only just developing the beam and keep it. So you need to keep it sustained with a good performance. So we will talk about this in the, in later in the presentations. Uh, we have five values in, our, in Tasneer. So we have our uh, very important safety, health, uh, environment and integrity, engagement, teamwork, and also respect. The last one, innovation. Uh, in Tasnir, we have more than 3,000 employees, and uh, we have 26 affiliates from big and small uh, companies. Uh, we will talk about our uh, SPU, which is the petrochemicals. We have uh, three uh, SPUs. We have petrochemicals and downstream. But the most big one for Tasnia is the petrochemicals. So we are in petrochemical responsible about producing the petrochemicals and marketing the petrochemicals also. Uh, we have several products. We have uh, polypropylene, and we have also LD uh, and HD as well as we have ethylene cracker and also BDH plant. So most of our product are uh, polymers and also monomers. We have small unit for the chemicals which is having butanol and acrylic acid. Uh, we are membership in uh, a lot of uh, associations, but the most important one are the Jibka as well as Jama'a. And we are certified in, in a lot of uh, international standards. And uh, this year, inshallah, we will be certified in the asset management standard, the ISO 55,000. Uh, here you can see our journey in Tasnir in, in the asset integrity. Uh, we started 2004, and uh, at that time, we start SAP. SAP is our uh, CMMS uh, model. So we starting at that time, and uh, you know we start the 
all of the data and uh, uh, maintenance work activity and all of that. 2004 to 2010, they started developing the BM development, but there was no baseline. They just matter going to the taking the manufacturer recommendation and they put it in the SAP and they are following that. 2010, starting an asset reliability initiative in Tasneer, and at that time it was Meridium, uh, and they're starting the Meridium at that time, and integration started with SAP. Also, uh, we starting at that time to developing the reliability procedure. I remember that in 2010, when the people are talking about reliability, but nobody know about what is that reliability it's mean. Uh, when I joined this in 2014, we started a reinforcement program. We developed the asset integrity or reliability procedure. Uh, and we starting the methodology concept from RCM, RBI, SIS, all of the methodologies. We developed the procedures and we start engage the people. And uh, after that, we starting also uh, developing the asset strategy for all of the critical asset. So you can see here, uh, we introduce the SMEs concept and we developing all the beam. Uh, the most challenge at that times, which is special from the management, the management, they're asking usually for the value out of, of this. We spend a lot of money in, uh, in all of this, so we need to get it back, the value. Uh, it's not easy to get it or explain to the management how to get the value out of the uh, asset integrity, because you know, asset integrity, it is taking long time. It is a journey, it's not one day or one year. So you need at least 10 years to get it back, the, the value out of that. Uh, and from 2018 to 2020, uh, we starting also uh, uh, review the critical uh, asset PM, and we're using the concept of the RCM, we're using Meridium for the RCM for the critical equipment, uh, and also we're starting uh, the concept of performance killer and bad actors, and we're using the the ABM to identify the performance killer and bad actors. We develop uh, a comprehensive dashboard for that, and uh, it was it was really a good uh, dashboard for all the level of the management to just look to that performance killer and bad actors and see how it is the performance of such equipment, and from initiation till we eliminate the performance killers. Uh, in in 20, uh, 2021, uh, I, I think, uh, alhamdulillah, we reached a good stage for the reliability, and uh, we have really a very good improvement uh, in the plant performance. And uh, as I mentioned also now, we want just to stamp to our asset management integrity by getting the ISO uh, asset management. Uh, this is just the journey of uh, Tasneer, and uh, also when we talk about asset integrity, usually we are talking about also the digitalization. So it is one of the initiative in, in most of the companies. So uh, usually the, the management in Tasneer, when they are talking about digitalization, they just said, okay, reliability, take care of the digitalization. So there is very integration between the digitalization and the reliability in, in, in most of the petrochemicals. Uh, I will not, I will go through quickly through the digitalization in Tasneer, but uh, after that, I will go and take you through our experience in Tasneer for the ABM. So we have here the four value of uh, digitalization. Uh, you know, most of the company, they are looking to realize from the asset. So this is very good as a realization uh, from the asset itself and getting the value of return to the stakeholder and all 
of the owner of the companies. And uh, also the digitalization will help the SNE, uh to uh, engage all of the team and getting working together more and more. Also, we will help the SNE to reach uh, the operation excellence. And the last one, uh, it is, will help us for more, to getting more initiative and having work, uh, very good uh, effectiveness to our process. Digitalization, what is the digitalization? There is a lot of people that are asking about the digital, digitalization. When we sit together in, in, in Tasnia, first of all, we identify what is the digitalization, what is, how, how, how we can uh, get to the digitalization with minimum, uh, uh, with good values, with minimum spend. So we have four stages of the digitalization. We start with digitization. And what is the digitization? Uh, we, you know, we have a lot of data, especially in the petrochemicals, big, huge number of data. So first of all, we need to see which data are not available as a soft right now. So some equipment, they don't have sensors. Some equipment, they don't have uh, uh, look, short, look sheet. So we are identify the data which is need to be a soft. Okay, this is the first part, which is the digitization. And after that, we will re-evaluate all of this data and see which one are important really to monitor and keep the equipment in good conditions. Uh, after that, we will go for the digital transformation programs and we keep it uh, accelerated, okay? During this journey in, in, in the digitization, digitalization, uh, we keep in our consideration three main items. First of all, uh, digitalization is not an IT project, it is a journey, so you need to keep it in your consideration that this is one. Second thing, we need to get the full support from the top management, executive management, for digital, digitalizations. And the third one, you need to think big, but start small. You know, investment in the digitalization is not easy. It is a lot of money, but at the end you will get the value out of it. So you need to start with a small initiative and get showing to the management how it is the return. Uh, now we will go through our experience really in, in, the, in the APM and how we are uh, uh, keeping, uh, monitoring our asset health uh, using APM. Uh, you know, an asset health man, uh, management model is in the Meridian or in the APM. Uh, this we starting using this model. It was, we are, we licensed in that model since 2014, but nobody opened it. And in 2000, uh, in 2020, I decided to really use that model and get the value out. You know, uh, some of the people, they are, think about the reliability, it's just developing a BIM strategy and put it in SAP and forget it. No, it is just a start. So, when, when you really you want to monitor your asset, you need to keep close on it all the times. So, and uh, special when uh, the operation are running the equipment, you need really to keep close to that because when you develop the BM, you develop based on uh, certain operation conditions. So if the opera operation are run the equipment more than that, that's mean your BM strategy is not fit. So, we take in considerations and we need to develop the PM and we need also to keep close to the operation and monitor the parameters for the equipment. So uh, we did interface, we developed our uh, platform. So uh, our platform we have an interface between SAP as a CMMS and also Hysterian data we have Honeywell, so we have interfaced the BHD, Process Hysterian Data, and we, we developed that platform as, as a main baseline. Uh, and also, we are get the license of the policy, 
Uh, this is will, will help us a lot to identify uh, the, the very important function and how we can develop the function for monitoring the asset. Uh, when we starting asset health, uh, we look to the number of the asset. We have big number of the asset, uh, but uh, we decided to start with the big or critical asset and see how it is really the value out of that. So we started with the critical five. We have the criticality from one to five. The five is the highest. So we start with the critical five. And after that, we starting also with the critical four. Now currently we have more than 80 asset under asset health. It's monitoring with huge number of the health indicators. And how the asset health is helping us. Uh, I, I remember that there is one case in, in, in one of the butanol plant. We have a reformer uh, asset, and it was run for around six months. The maximum temperature should be run is uh, 700, and the operation, the operation they run the equipment for 800 for six months. And after that, we have a big failures. And after that, now, every day, our, <laughs> our aesthetic engineer, he sent an email, and he keeping really close the operation. You will need to return back to that temperatures. So uh, you can see here our, our dashboard uh, for uh, uh, our dashboard for the health indicators. So the value we get it from the health indicator, and we are keeping close to that asset, and not only for one parameter it's going out of the boundaries. We also using the policy to having a multiple parameters if it is going in the same times, and this is the value here. So, for example, if we have a vibration is going out of the range, so it will send alert to the respective engineer, and also, if there is a vibration and also oil temperature are going at the same times, we are sending. So we're developing a formula for each equipment based on the failure mode and see, identify which is parameter are really are changed in that failure mode. And we will send uh, the alert to the respective engineer. And also, we are trying to work now with the SAP to make the system sending emergency notification automatically when our, this uh, parameter are going out of the range. After we implement the asset performance for the asset level, we see really the value out of that. And uh, I remember in 2021, September, our VB is called me and said, Sultan, I, I have very good experience and value out of the asset. And I need to making this for a system wise. It's not an equipment. Uh, I told him, okay, it's fine. So he said, we have a cooling water system, which is the big cooling water in the GRB, and one of the most critical system in the companies. It's serving all of the companies. And he said, I need a dashboard and asset health monitoring. Uh, for the dashboard, and you have only two months. <laughs> I need it before end of the year. You have open budget, and I need to have a dashboard monitoring for that system. I told him, okay, I will try my best. I hope, inshallah, I can, I can get it. And alhamdulillah, we are able to get that one within two months, and less than two months. With, with the flexibility of the APM, which is, this is one of the good things. So the good things in APM, it is, it is really flexible and easy for you to monitor the, the equipment level and system. You can see in front of you, this is uh, our uh, uh, internal dashboard developed with the SNI for the cooling water systems. Uh, you can see here, we have the MTBF for the system itself, and we have also uh, the risk level for 
the health of the cooling water, as well as we're monitoring also the PM compliance and uh, the parameters. Out the value of that, we are increasing really the availability of the systems, and we are changing the behavior to be a proact concept, which is very important. This is really uh, very important. And this will help us if there is any RCA happening, uh, I mean, any failure in the future happening, we will help us for the RCA and for investigation and getting the data for uh, the, the failure itself. Uh, we are able to managing the risk by having tracking all the risk and all the times. And also we are eliminate the failure for that cooling water. And alhamdulillah, since uh, we're starting monitoring that one, we don't have any failures. So which is really, uh, it, it is a good thing. How we develop the health monitoring for big systems? This is the questions. Uh, we are reviewing all of the history. We, we, we collect the teams, SMEs, and we review the history for that systems. And uh, we determine the main failure mode for that systems. And we come up with the three failure mode. Okay? And when we determine this failure mode, we look to which parameters in the, would help us to really eliminate this failure mode. Okay? So, we come up, let me just go, yes. Uh, here, just be, I will give you, this is, you can see the hierarchy of our dashboard. So we have higher level for the executive management. And second level, it is for uh, maybe the engineers and the managers. The third one are details one, which is for the static engineer mainly and uh, maintenance teams. Uh, here, you can see, we are determining what exactly the very important parameters to monitor that failure mode, the three failure mode. So we come up, we come up with the, uh, several parameters and put a weight for each parameter. We put the pressure, okay, the, uh, the water temperature, and pump vibration, uh, water flow, as well as analyzers, uh, inspection findings, and also the operator round, and the water quality. And we put score for each parameters. And the score based on the experience, and which is one high and one low. And also we put uh, a weight average for all of them. And we develop a formula, which is to determine the risk using policy management. Uh, this is, will give us an uh, overview about the current risk of the system and just keep close to that uh, risk. And also we're using uh, the KBIs uh, uh, for the APM and we, did, we put that formula in that one. Uh, and we just keeping uh, the level of the risk, if it is uh, high risk, which is 100, if, if, if we have a high risk, that means uh, when, when we, sorry for that, based at the, at the beginning, the people, they are not understanding how it is, how we come up with the formula, okay? But we, we explain to them, when we have a uh, high number, we will go, we'll have low risk. And we have, if low number, we'll have high risk. So the most important are to be in the green zone. So this is, this is the most important. And we usually keep in closing to that risk. And if there is any change number of the risk level, we will send indications to all of the uh, concerned engineers and management and all of that. Uh, and I remember in, in, in last summer, 
2022 during uh, one of the major holiday in, in, uh, in our countries, uh, the system, the risk is going very high. And uh, Alhamdulillah, it is sent the indication the right times and we are able to protect the failure, big failure, using the dashboard. Uh, it was really a successful story for the, our dashboard. And uh, now, and now we are uh, uh, keeping close for that systems and really we see the successful stories for uh, uh, our asset health monitoring by using in the system wise and in equipment wise. For the inspections, we have also another one level down, several parameters. So we put, if there is a major crack or small crack, we'll have also scored that, okay? So in the inspection, we have three, I remember, we have three another sub parameters, the crack and uh, also a leak, if there is any small leak in the system itself. And the other one parameters, I don't remember that one. But based on that three, we are putting the score of the inspections. And the same applies to operate around that year. Yes, also that one are looking for, uh, we put uh, automated uh, uh, ventilations for the systems. Because you know, the cooling, wa the, the, the cooling water system, if there is high, uh, if there is any uh, gases there, it will be back to that one. So we, we develop, uh, uh, automated ventilations for in some areas of the systems. So we ask operation to go and ensure the, the ventilations are, are working fine uh, uh, in, in periodical times. Assalamu alaikum, Sultan. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Uh, Sultan, regarding the, you are monitoring the, all the parameters through health indicator in APM. So what about the IOW? So the IOWs is part of this or you have separate program for it? Yeah, thank you for the questions. We are using the IOW and also additional to IOW another parameters we put in there. So we, we covering the IOW for the static equipment, all of the static critical static equipment. And also we are adding some parameters for our usage for that. Hello. Yes. Uh, one question. Uh, early in the beginning, you said that you had the, the tool that no one was using it, and uh, you decided to start using this tool. Uh, what were the main challenges on your company and that you face when you started, you know, to give that click to start using the, the tool? Yes. Thank you. The first challenge it was interface with the BHD. It's not easy to get it interface with the BHD. So this was really the first challenges for us. And uh, after we get that interface with the BHD, another challenge which is how to determine the parameters or the, uh, for the asset and how you set up the value for each levels. Because you know, in the, in the, in the, in the parameter you need to put up, you need to put, uh, determine the value for the alert, the warning and the normal. So this is really one of the challenges because, you know, usually we have a lot of challenges and discussion with the operation about these values. It's not easy. So usually operation, they want to have open, <laughs> open boundaries for them. So this is one of the challenges, really. Uh, you got the digital tool and the people, right? So when you try to make a better use of this model, but by the way, I mean, we're all I mean, uh, quite interested in, in, getting, in succeeding in that. Um, how did you define what roles were involved? Because I see warning levels. I mean, I, you can expect that to kind of take care of that by a ball man in the DCS, but because it's not only okay, who's going to take care of that tool? Do, do, you, do you have to kind of elaborate a workflow with roles and what they expect to do? I mean, who gathers information, who analyzes, who? Yes. Yeah, good, good question. Um, as, as I mentioned, we have three levels of the dashboard. We have one highest level for the executive management, which is they want just to know the current level, the risk, the, the, the current uh, risk level and how it is, it's under monitoring or I mean under, under uh, 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 good level or no. This is which is the first one. The second level, which is, 
really important for the people are in the field itself, which is we are talking about operation manager, maintenance managers, and this level of the manager levels. We give them also the second level of the dashboard, which is in the most important, which is the parameter we didn't identify them. Okay? And we have another third level, which is each parameters, okay, the also the the health indicator for each parameter, which is maybe are important for static engineers and maintenance engineer and all of that. Uh, based on the level of uh, each parameter and uh, condition of parameter, we send an email. So we develop a policy for each uh, uh, level, which is the either warning or alert. And based on that level, the email is going to a specific group. So if, if the risk for each parameter are going for the warning, is going for the engineers, and if going to alert, is going for higher people. Hi, good morning. Thanks for that uh, excellent presentation and for sharing the, your experience in your company. I have a question regarding the dashboards, uh, the drill down option. Did you create those dashboards by yourself, I mean, in, in, in your company, or do you get support from GE? Because uh, in some cases, when you have kind of uh, scorecards or metrics, having the, the, the needs of uh, maybe a cube that requires some high technical uh, skills, let's say, to, to create those uh, dashboards. So how was your, your experience on that? Okay. Uh, it is developed internally, but we, we get back to the GE teams when we have any challenges. So usually, and we, we usually we come back to the, the teams uh, for uh, in, in GE if, they, if we face any challenges. But it is internally developed, all the dashboard. I have one question. Like uh, you have mentioned that this was beneficial. But at the same time, when you have an alert or when you have an issue, how you were tracking that actually? Or for every issue, you were logging it and then whether the operation team was maintaining how it was useful to them. Or, you know, I mean, we are all talking about value and ROI and all those things. So how do you, how tangible it is like for the whole process? How did you evaluate it? The first one, which is, you know, the current, uh, the current condition of the system itself and the risk which is, this is very important. So I'm in the green zone, or in the red zone, or in yellow zone. This is, this is very important, which is, is keep you really in top of everything. This is the first one, which is important by the executive management. The second thing, for each parameters, we are keep closing that, and we ask to the respective engineers, or the respective people, to really, if there is any abnormality, they have immediate action need to take it. So also, this is uh, the other values. <coughs> And one of the value we get, it, there is a lot of fault signs coming by the uh, analyzers. And this is one of the things we, we found it. So usually we'll have alerts coming to the systems, and we discover that it is really uh, a wrong signals is coming for the analyzers. And uh, another value we get it also, there is a lot of analyzers in the systems. No BM done for that analyzers. And by this system, we ensure really all the analyzers are, uh, are maintained well. So this is really the, the values. Yes, uh, uh, this is a great uh, presentation. Do you have any plans in your pipeline to also include, uh, for example, RGA, reliability distribution, uh, statistical process control, and QSUM? And how confident are you to embed all those things uh, if you want to embed those things inside the dashboard? Yes. Actually, in our performance killer systems, which we developed in TASNI, uh, any asset going to the performance killers, okay, we will have uh, reliability uh, growth analysis for that. So it is one of our, our activities. We are doing it. So we're doing it in, in asset levels. <laughs> 